Namaste, everyone. I welcome you with great love and great respect. Welcome to Meditative Living for July 20th, 2012. I am His Holiness, Swami Shivananda Giri, and I am the representative to you of His Holiness Maha Mandeleshwar Paramahamsa Swarupananda Vishwaguru Maharaj. He is the living master in the tradition that I speak of and which I represent. It is only by his will that I do what I do. <clears throat> he trained me, put up with my crap <laughs> for a number of years, and then got me to the point where he says, okay, now you go out on the interweb nets and <laughs> help others. So this is what we do here at Meditative Living. I want to thank uh, Steve Gaddafi and his lovely lady Fajic, whose actual name I do not know, but at some point in the future I'm sure I will learn it. Uh, Steve is sitting in for reset, running the board, and uh, making sure that <clears throat> all the buttons get pressed when the time is correct. <laughs> so thank you very, very much, Steve, for jumping in here in uh, Reset's absence. An absolute pleasure and honor, Swami. <laughs> yep, no problem. I heard you guys, but just barely. Can you hear it now? Oh, yeah. Speak up loud and clear. You guys are <laughs> in the background somewhere here. Yeah, we had, we had a material mishap oh, just prior. Oh, yeah, that's right. We broke our have, microphone stand. <laughs> have you got things squared away, or do you need to mute and me just well, we'll, we'll mute and we'll come in when requested, yeah? I think it's okay. I don't think it'll squeak, will it? No, no, no. But we'll, we'll, we'll turn down the mic anyway and when you need us, you... Call for us, yeah. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> and we answered that call. That's Very what we well. for. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, today, I have some some a plan for something I I've I've not done before um, utilizing this show as an outlet. Um, I, I, I did something here recently uh, through the Skype uh, instant messaging thing with uh, Jim in England and Ken in Texas. And I'm very, I'm aware of, of doing this and how this happens and all, but I hadn't actually uh, done it in a situation where people were not near me actually physically, okay? Uh, so utilizing only what they could read, I did a, a bit of a yogi thing, <laughs> and uh, and they had pretty interesting effects due to due to that. So we're going to do that uh, later on in the show today. <clears throat> I would like to open by thanking. Everyone, all the initiates 
of His Holiness that I serve, I want to say thank you from His Holiness. A number of people, after hearing about his stroke, uh, did what they do. Healers, people of good intent, just, you know, whatever was appropriate to the individuals who found out about this event. Uh, folks went at it hardcores, doing more java, more meditation, more prayer, uh, healing methods and modalities for his physical vehicle on this planet. And it was successful. <laughs> He's feeling very well now. Uh, I've had the opportunity to interact with him a few times, and all is well. So I don't want anyone to be uh, concerned. His Holiness is doing fine, and the body is recovering. The physical vehicle. This is how he and I refer to bodies, because we're... You know, we're both very aware we're not these things. <laughs> we have them. We're utilizing them, yes, but we are not limited to them in any way, shape, or form. So if you hear me at some point in the future talking about vehicles, I'm not talking about used cars. I'm talking about bodies. It's just sometimes I forget to say body and I use vehicle. So this is... Uh, I just want to make that clear as well. Because see, your body, your physical body, which you are utilizing to pick up the vibrational frequency influence of this show, is in essence very much like if you were to fly to Florida and go to Miami for a while and need to get around and function in Miami, you would get a rental car. The body is like the rental car you use. It gets you around while you're here in this situation, and then when you're done, that's that. It's very very simple <clears throat> so we don't like folks to be lost in the mind and physical sense limitation unfortunately your entire life most people, you've only been trained and conditioned to function within the individualized and externalized mind process, the thought pattern process, and the needs and wants of the physical body senses. Only really because you just weren't aware there was other stuff. <laughs> you know, if, if you're not somehow involved in some sort of esoteric practice or community or uh, investigation or research, you'll not know unless you have spontaneous occurrences which just happen out of nowhere. But many, many people are going through these spontaneous occurrences right now. 
finding themselves in states other than the mind-body limitation. In this way, I speak of things like astral experiences, experiences with different dimensions, experiences of alternate realities. All this stuff is very, very real. It's always been around you. You just weren't aware of it. But now, a lot of people are becoming aware of this sort of thing. And <clears throat> when people have what in our tradition is referred to as a kundalini awakening, oftentimes they think they're going crazy completely losing their minds because they're becoming aware of things outside of their conditioning and previous experience. This isn't a bad thing, but it can be an, a, a hugely disruptive thing to a human. Um, anyone who's ever read a, the book, I don't recall the name right now, but it was written by a man named Gopi Krishna from India. And he went through about 15 years of Kundalini. Nuts. He's seeing things. And things are happening that there is just no reasonable, logical, linear, processed explanation for. Now, eventually, he did find a master, and the master got him squared away, and he became a master himself. And, you know, I mean, this is how this stuff works, but... A lot of people are just going through the kundalini awakening process. And when you're going through that stuff without any guidance from someone who really knows what's going on, it's very easy to really get freaked out by this stuff. It is a completely natural thing that's happening, but it doesn't seem the least bit natural from the normal societal perspective. It seems totally crazy. And some of it hurts like hell. You will get burning up and down your spine. Muscles jumping and, and twitching and all sorts of things. People will do yoga positions that they've never, ever practiced. But all of a sudden, without them telling the body to do this, it will do it. It just happens. And this is very normal, natural things to have happen. It's just people don't know how to relate to this process, which every soul will go through when it is their time to awaken within a body. This is the process which occurs. In Christianity, they refer to it as the Holy Spirit. Here in Kashmir Shaivism, in Sanatana Dharma, the eternal way, we say kundalini. It is when the, the dormant force within you, lying curled up at the base of your spine, it becomes active. 
and it moves up the spine. And there are all sorts of really strange things that can occur along with that. <clears throat> Again, all completely normal <laughs> and natural to the human. But when one is unprepared and ill-informed, these things just seem like you're nuts or some terrible thing is happening within the body that no doctor can find a reason for because there isn't a physical reason for it. So anyone I would like to recommend, anyone who hears this, whether it be in this moment live or through the archive, I would ask you to please visit the website meditativeliving.info. Again, that's meditativeliving.info. And on that, you'll be able to read all about what it is that we do about what Sanatana Dharma is, and you'll be able to get a vibe of what's going on through that. And then on that site is my personal email address. If you're going through anything like what I've been talking about, I am more than happy to help you with this process. This is what I do. So please, Utilize meditativeliving.info, get my email address from there, and write if you are suffering any of the symptoms that I've been discussing. Okay? It's very important that you have someone on your side who knows what's going on to assist you through this stuff. Again, it's very natural. It's a blessed thing. <laughs> it means you're fixing to wake up. You're fixing to see the truth for what it is. Directly and consciously from within yourself, which is the only place it's been hiding. You just didn't know to look there or how. And that's fine. It's not a problem. You weren't a bad person. It just wasn't time yet. When the student is ready, the master appears. It's always been this way. And I don't take the whole master thing real, real seriously or nothing. If you talk to anybody that knows me or works with me, I'm just a normal dude. I just happen to know some stuff. But otherwise, <laughs> I'm subnormal. I got to look up to see normal in my personal life. Yes. Not a problem. And I, and I find it very valuable that I've been through all the crap that I've been actually now, I understand, blessed to experience in my own personal life so that I can better interact with people who are in that place where I have been right now. Because I've been there too. Just yesterday, I had the opportunity to give initiation to a gentleman who's been involved in various spiritual practices for a long time. And he's had some really, really cool experiences. 
but he wanted to know more. And after hearing me, he felt the vibe. He felt it. It's something that really, really happens within you for those who feel this. And those who go through that, those are the ones that we're referring to when we say having the ears to hear or the eyes to see, okay? It's an intuitive thing. It's got nothing to do with the current thought process going on in your mind. It's something else, something deeper that goes, hey, what's that? I don't know, but it sounds good. It feels right, but I don't understand it. And some people get exposed to to that level, and then they get kind of wigged out. <laughs> and that's completely normal, too. I couldn't tell you how many people, when I very first get to to actually interact with them personally over the phone and that, are kind of wigged out because of just the way they feel and stuff going on within them and things that are making <laughs> the divine is revealing itself to these people. This is actually what's occurring. And there is a process that we all go through when this occurs. And if you have the availability to get the attention of someone who knows what the hell they're talking about and has already been through the process, then you should really take advantage of that. So anyway, <clears throat> I was talking with this guy yesterday and he just lost his wife. She left um, and I had the opportunity to, to share with him my experience in losing a wife. My ex-wife, I once stood and held her hand as she gave birth <clears throat> to another man's child. Before that, I stood and I held her hand while she had an abortion of another man's child. I had had a vasectomy years and years before, so this was not mine, <laughs> obviously. But <clears throat> we go through these things. It's okay. It's not fun, not at all, but sometimes it's just necessary. And... At the moment yesterday when I was speaking with this man, I was quite thankful for having gone through those experiences so I could say that to him. And if that helped him in any way, good. Because honestly, it just, it doesn't mean anything to me now. It doesn't cause any sort of emotional anything within my mind or the physical body. Nothing gets triggered. None of that, okay? It's over, done with, and gone. Been there, done that. Bought a beer and a t-shirt and split. But there are numerous humans going through such major changes in their lives at the moment. 
This is all very necessary. It must occur. It's not a punishment. It's a preparation for the way things are going to be. And I know a bunch of couples who are having issues, even though both of them are on spiritual paths. It's okay. Let these let these things be as they are. Deal with them day to day, but stick with your practices. Because it's the practices that will carry you beyond the grasp of this nonsense and emotional attachment. And you'll come out the other side. I promise you will come out the other side. If you focus on the practice. If you do not, you only get the world. Nothing else. No help. I can't help you. If you just sit having a wank at you porn, reading all the crap on the internet, getting worked up over Alex Jones, whatever, you know, that's all you're going to have. Trouble, problems, danger. No peace, no harmony, no bliss. Those are the things I'm here to help you find within yourself, not outside of you anywhere, not conditional upon anything, sitting right there inside you the whole time. It's been there. And that's what I do. I help you go inside and find this. And it doesn't, it's not like, you know. Day by day, things change. Sometimes it's dramatic. Mostly, it's very subtle, and you don't even notice a change until something that was a problem has fallen away, and you go, oh, wow, I remember I used to react this way, or whatever, you know, and that's the way I'm finding a lot of people are experiencing this, regardless of their level of practice. But those who are really doing practices are getting these benefits. There's no way for you not to. That's the only reason to do them. <laughs> Regardless what you think about what is to come, that doesn't matter. Because I'll guarantee you, 95% of the human bodies listening to me now and their individuated, externalized minds don't know shit about what enlightenment is really about. But that's okay. It's just they're incorrect. Because there's tons of books out there that'll try to tell you this, that, or the other thing. Tons of websites that'll try to tell you this, that, or the other thing. I'm telling you, they're all full of crap. Not one of them is pointing you towards the goal. They're all pointing you towards effects. I am trying to get your perception outside the field of effect so you can take it in in its entirety. No longer confused by the bits and the pieces. And in order to do that, the mind has to slow down. And slowing down the mind is what we're going to accomplish after our commercial 
and our mantra song. So, Steve, if you would hit those for me, please. I sure will, Swami. Uh, I just want to tell the people listening that tonight's mantra comes from Chris Shaw and David Pike. Thank you. Flawless science believes you deserve the right to have a long and healthy life. You deserve to have toxin-free air and water and foods rich in minerals and nutrients. Factory farming, genetically modified foods, and thousands of environmental contaminants are polluting our world and stripping your right to healthy life away from you. FlawlessScience.com helps you regain these rights. FlawlessScience.com makes natural products and provides the best nutraceutical products to enhance your quality of life, your state of health, and well-being. So whether you're struggling with obesity, diabetes, hypertension, memory loss, allergies, high cholesterol, neuropathy, or to spice things up in the bedroom, FlawlessScience.com is here to help you. FlawlessScience.com ships quickly worldwide in discreet packaging and will never sell your information to anyone for any reason. For all your wellness, weight control, extreme muscle building, and nutraceutical needs, visit FlawlessScience.com today.
Namaste. Namaste. Welcome back to Meditative Living. <clears throat> All right. Now, with the last few minutes, not well, with the remainder of the show, if you will allow me to do this, I'm going to slow the thought process within your mind as you are listening. The reason I'm doing this is to show you it can be done. And it can be done by some goofy dude sitting in Illinois talking on the radio. Deep within FEMA Region 5. This is natural stuff. It's not, <laughs> it's not crazy. It's not a cult. It doesn't take anything away from you. It only gives you more to work with. More to share with others, more to build community on. Because what happens when the mind slows, you perceive differently. And when the mind slows, you notice it. It becomes apparent. Oh my God, here I was just running around, yada, 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 mind, 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 running the whole time, and then it slows. So to help me, and so you have involvement in this process of slowing your mind, I would like you to join me in repetition of the mantra. Those of you who are already initiates, I recommend you go ahead and begin the mantra now and just let the words that you hear me say, run through the sense of hearing without triggering excessive thought. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. For those of you who do not know what I'm saying, I am saying Om Nama Shivaya. By pronouncing these syllables, you create within yourself a vibrational frequency response that can carry you beyond the grasp and limitations of the physical senses and the individuated and externalized mind function. Om Nama Shivaya. By saying this in English, you are saying, I honor the infinite. Is that okay with you to say? Is that a problem? I don't name any God. Nope. 
Just honor the infinite at this point. That's it. It all comes from that into a finite state. And it returns to that. Always has. Always will. Om Nama Shivaya. 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 As you are experiencing the vibrational sensations passing through your sense of hearing, I would like you to place your hand on your chest over your heart. Either hand is just fine. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. Just place the hand on the heart. <clears throat> Feel the sensation of the hand touching the skin of the chest. Focus there. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. And if you will allow me, I wish to share that hand and bring my influence into this area, but only with your approval. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. I want you to feel our hand. We are sharing it only for this moment and only for this purpose that you will feel whether it be a sensation, a vibration, a warmth, a cooling, a liquid sort of feeling, anything is fine. There's no rules for this stuff. If you feel it, you've got it already just sitting there inside you waiting om nama shivaya i honor the infinite that infinity lives within you you do not live in this universe. This universe lives within you. You had to forget that for a while. 
Now, it's time to remember and recognize what has always been there. I honor infinity. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. I'm feeling it with you. <laughs> This is an enjoyable thing for anyone involved. The degree to which it occurs is completely irrelevant. The fact that it occurs is what we want to focus on. I'm not hypnotizing you. I don't even know how to do that. But what we want to experience is the slowing of the mental processes. You are complete, whole, and perfect without that mental process occurring at all. It's fine. For those experiencing various feelings and phenomena at the top of your head or between your eyes, this is completely natural. Do not worry. Everything is exactly how it is supposed to be in this moment for you. It's okay. I am merely sharing something with you because you have allowed me to do this. You are the one in control, not me. There is a stillness that lacks nothing. There is an empty fullness it is empty because nothing yet exists. Everything is still, only resting, waiting to emerge from the divine, from the source, by whatever sound you associate with that principle. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> Om Namah Shivaya. I honor the infinite. Om Nama Shivaya. <laughs> Om Nama. Shivaya Just sit with me here now No yesterday No tomorrow Now Here with me It's okay It's alright to feel this good it's okay. You've always been far more than you knew you were. 
You weren't being punished. Please don't think that way. Om Dhamma Shivaya. Om Dhamma Shivaya. You are one. Without a second, there is no other. That was a misunderstanding. A shadow fell across the light which you are. And you, <laughs> your source, is beyond even that light. That light is an effect. You're beyond that too. Don't attach to the effects. Observe them, but don't attach to them. Om Nama Shivaya Om Nama Shivaya Om Nama Shivaya May this peace become stable within your consciousness. May this peace, this stillness, this truth reveal itself through you. Om. Nama Shivaya. Om. to end begin to return to your natural state of awareness and consciousness 
Rub your hands together. And then rub your face. As we come back to the world in which it is our duty to function, thank you for tuning in to Meditative Living today. If something occurred for you, within you during this episode of Meditative Living, I would be most happy to discuss it with you. Go to meditativeliving.info and you'll find my email address. For those of you who are currently initiates, you know how to get a hold of me already. I'll be very interested to hear what has occurred for everyone. And if nothing appears to have occurred for you, that's okay too. No big deal. You didn't fail at anything. Wasn't time for you to hit it yet. That's all. When the time is right, it occurs. Steve, if you can hit our outro. Yeah, what, what is that? I'm not sure what that is. Huh? Is it uh, Monday night Takagira? Stay bad again. Is it this one? Uh, no. This one? It will be today. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> he didn't tell you which one it was, did he? No, written down. No. Okay. No, that's the open. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Well, I think that was just a beautiful show, Swami. I had a, I had a inner moment, peaceful moment. <laughs> No, uh, and okay, here, right at the end. Steve, fight chick, did anything occur for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just enjoyed it. I just it. enjoyed that. I just enjoyed the peace and doing the mantra for, um, I, um, tell me, Swami, is it okay to close your eyes when you're doing it? Oh, yeah. You should. Oh, Okay. Now, while doing japa during the daytime and you're just engaged in mundane activities, you know, that's then eyes open, eyes closed, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But when doing something like we were just doing, yes, you want the eyes closed. You want the senses turned off at, as much as possible because they interfere and cause more thoughts to come. Yeah. And we don't want that. Especially when you're sitting in front of a computer screen, which is not... It's under. It's okay. You were you get you were doing a job, so that's different. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell everyone. Okay, you know, stop everything you're doing in your life. No. There will be some who have had great effects through this. There will be some who only rested, and that's good. <laughs> it's a great thing. Feels mighty good. Yeah, I think I think that's very very lacking in um, modern society these days. Is the 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 um, the knowledge to rest has been lost. Right. If you do not take breaks to rest, you get no rest. <laughs> Duh. Nothing regenerates. <laughs> And it's a way of resting the mental process as well. Right. That's the point. Just because the trip. mental process is what's causing all the trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Because when you're sitting rested, there isn't trouble. Very true. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But I... that is very good. Thank you very much, both of you, for allowing. Well, first of all, first of all, for filling in for reset. Yeah, yeah, anytime. That's right. Any, any, any yeah. time. I'm always here. And uh, and thank you for you two's interest. No, no, it's yeah, no, that's uh, great. I that's love, okay. I love yeah. the mantras. Um, well, when life when, is the practice, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's it was very interesting hearing you um, give a little bit of uh, insight into your own um, life there and the you know the the weight that we carry around with yeah. us through our life. No and, one is without. So, uh, and how you know they're heavy at the time, but. Uh, but as time goes on, these things become much lighter and then weigh nothing at all. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And for those of us who are here, chose, made choices before incarnating in these bodies to be here now. Mm -hmm. Many of us exist. Mm. And we are the Archon's worst nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Because we have knowledge they can't have. Mm. And we can do it without doing anything. <laughs> Just being ourselves and looking at them. Mm -hmm. I think that's very true of many people. I think people don't realize their own power. They don't realize their own ability to... to <laughs> I don't know how to put this, well, really. People have been taught not to recognize their own power. They've been led, well, they've been led right, away, yeah, yeah. They've been led it's, away it's, from a natural life. It, it's is, this whole submission thing, isn't it? And mm -hmm. being told that you have to ask the nanny state and uh, mm. you know you have to ask teacher can I go to the toilet can I do this can I do that and um, asking permission to love is yeah asking permission a very all bad the time. place to be in and it. when people realize that you don't need permission to do anything you can just do anything you just are just live your life and take all take the steps one one day at a time, one thing at a time, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You don't have to blame anybody, you don't have to blame yourself, you don't have to um, be, you know, looking for someone to look after you all the time or looking for, you know, you, you can be an independent soul. Your, your soul is yours to um, express within the world. It doesn't need permission to do anything. Just re just re remember you are the universe. Yeah, exactly. The universe exists within you, not you within the universe. That's a mistake. Mm. It's all in you. Mm -hmm. Always has been always will be even once you're fully enlightened and liberated, you can stub your toe in the dark. People cannot like you and talk crap about you. You can have a car accident. All these things can occur to completely enlightened and liberated humans. No big deal. It's, it's life playing out. That's what it does. Duality is not a mistake. It is not a punishment. It is a condition to be seen through. And then functioned within. Like lucid dreaming. When you are in a dream and you realize, I'm in a dream, but I'm awake. And I can do stuff. That's what this is like. You awaken to the fact this physical life is like a dream. 
Because when I awakened from it, it wasn't there. None of what was in that mattered. But then you return into it, awakened and able to function, awakened. And that's what we need now. That's why His Holiness sent me out into the interweb nets <laughs> to do these things. Otherwise, I would just be sitting quietly smiling <laughs> and not doing a whole lot of anything. Mm. Mm -hmm. I know I often think, what's the point in becoming a very enlightened kind of monk or something in a monastery in the middle of or top of some mountain. Um, well, I suppose, you know, that's an experience to some extent. But then, uh, you know, just it, how, how does that experience relate to actually helping people who are trying to bring up families and live lives and um, grow corn or, <laughs> you know, just, just do the mundane things of life? Um, well, see, once upon a time, life. once upon a time, that was uh, the way it was done for several reasons. You needed to leave society and go into the presence of a master to get to where the master is. Mm. I, then when you're done, you can go do anything you want. You're awake, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Anymore. But yeah. for, that, for a period of time, that was the way it was done. Well, today, it's different. Today, whole families can wake up. I'm watching this happen. It doesn't have to be the I leave society to awaken thing. No. You can awaken functioning within society, raising kids, and working a job without missing a day of work. I've seen it happen. You know, you know what though, I think people have always awoken like that and I think there have always been enlightened beings within any um, sect of society, no matter where, whether you're a, a fisherman in the Outer Hebrides or whether you're um, living on an island in the West Indies or you're someone who's taken the practice through and living on a mountain in Tibet or something. I'm, I'm sure, you, you know, you, it, it, it's not just people who are within the monastic orders or this oh, kind no, of thing. No, no. But I, I do think that um, the monastic orders, especially in this country, um, many years ago, they kind of isolated themselves and they were beautiful functioning things in themselves, but they weren't that much part of, like, the real world in a way. They, right, right. They, How they, they, much part of community could they be that way? Yeah, well, because they they had you know they had the their um, uh, church or whatever the, the monastery um, and the walled gardens and they grew uh, grapes, made beautiful wine, made lovely bread, you know looked after themselves. They lived. That if you went into one of these places, you were you were sorted for life, except that you couldn't have sex or a, ma a marriage or a. Um, you know, a, a relationship and a family, that kind of thing. It was all, um, you know, you had to give your life to the practice, so to speak. And so I, I, it's that kind of element that I feel that um, it, is, it loses the connection with what it's meant to be, which is actually to help just, well, not help, but just to, to give um, a... To, it kind of isolates the very many people. It's almost like it's like a secret society kind of thing. We'll keep you in here, we'll look after you, but this is the way it's going to be, and you don't get to go and do all those things. It kind of puts it all on a plate there for you, um, but says, oh, but you just can't quite have this. And for me, that isn't a holistic practice. That doesn't kind of encompass everything. Right. Um, That's why we are not doing it that way. Yeah. And, and That's why... This Swami gets on this little meditative living show and does these things and says these words that touch people 
in various ways, <laughs> and to be quite honest with you, both on this planet and off, because it's time for this. That's all. It's just a shift. It's just a widening of the potential for change. I think it like those those who are ready, willing, and able to accept will. And those who are not will not. It's that simple. It really is. I, I think um, that it is good to go and, and immerse yourself in a practice and to kind of take something on wholeheartedly, you know. But, um, yeah, I think that ultimately you have to use that as part of your full life, your whole life. And exactly. Develop. Continue mm. your mundane life yeah. Yeah. while you do the practices. Uh, mm. And actually, just <laughs> understanding boredom <laughs> Yeah. Good is, point. <laughs> is one of the, the biggest lessons that you can learn in your life because there is a lot of boredom to deal with in the mundane life and being able to deal with that you know is um, this is you know that's why television and computer games and all these kind of crappy things are there to distract the mind and move it away from just getting to the point where it's just boring it's fucking boring <laughs> right. And yep. deal with it, you know, deal with, it, deal exactly, with yeah. that. When you can deal with that, you can go and sit anywhere, um, you know, you can appreciate just watching the leaves blow on a tree or, um, you know, as you get older, you, you it, it, it's a practice perhaps of aging, you know, that as you get older, you, you can just sit and do nothing quite easily. <laughs> Children don't find that so easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a, a maturing of the mind as well as maybe a deadening of the brain cells. <laughs> but I, I think that, yeah, that, that process for like a young student is that's quite important to, um, to just understand boredom, boredom of the practice, boredom of life, boredom of having to do stuff to pay the bills, no matter what it is, having to go and pick all the apples. My, my black currant bushes and my red currant bushes in the garden are, are really need me to go and pick all the, the fruit from them at the moment. But there's so much. It's all right, you know, if you're just going to go and pick a few. But it takes me about two hours to do this. And it does get quite boring. But I do find it quite a sort of um, like a meditation with nature. You know, I do, uh -huh. I do some of my best thinking when I'm just kind of sitting out there mm. doing something mundane in the garden or even cleaning the house. I know it sounds stupid, but I do some of my best thinking when I'm cleaning. <laughs> Doesn't sound stupid in the least bit to me. <laughs> it's, uh, but I understand what's going on within you. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's getting people to 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 realise that actually these things. All right, it, it, we may call it boring, but that's a point. That's mm. a point of. Um, well, there's a process going on. Yeah, isn't there? That, that's the point that you're at there. Deal with that point. If you can deal with that point, then you begin to open and you can begin to deal with many things in your life. Absolutely correct. And so how many folks do you know who do not have even that little bit of knowledge? Ooh, or, or that amount of patience, you, you know, they rather, mm. when things get boring, you know, well, you know, let's get a divorce or let's uh, move house or let's, um, I don't know, go and play a video game or, you know, there's no, there's no um, you see with these kids, you know, like say troubled kids and you, you, you take them somewhere and try to, or in schools and things, and they're just so bored with things. They just can't face that boredom factor. And it's, <laughs> being able to deal with that is just so important. Mm. <laughs> the 
way the way you deal with boredom in your life. I mean, after yep. all, yeah, if we're all going to end up in FEMA camps, we need to be able to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be sitting there meditating and teaching in the re-education camp. Yeah, yeah exactly. Good. Okay. Yeah. Makes no difference to me where this body sits. It will be engaged in the same effort. Yeah. Regardless. It doesn't matter who's around me. It's going to hit them. The vibe. Yeah. You know, it's weird. When you get to a certain place in this tradition, in this practice, in this awakening, and I mean to take nothing away from the other particular traditions and paths and masters who all find the same damn thing. But once you get to a certain place, you become like a 50,000 watt transmitter pushing this vibe all the time. And you need not even think of it. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with the thoughts of the mind. Yeah. It has to do with the vibrational frequency influence. That's it. And it does what it does. And you don't have to think a thing about it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that you say that, actually, because I was listening to um, the song today, Good Vibrations, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Beach Boys. Boys, yeah. And I was thinking about the Earth just giving off her good vibrations. And I was thinking how, that, that for many people, I think the, that these kind of vibrations that are, or, you know, must be coming through or may be coming through or that we feel are coming through at this time will be very disturbing for a lot of people and it will trigger that kind of, um, that the anxiety, fit, the, fit, yeah. the anxiety mm. and the fidget button within people. Um, and how to deal with that is, uh, yeah, how, how to bring, that, you know, and it's up to to us to bring that resonance mm. to a you know, point within our community. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had an interesting experience during the mantra that we just done about 50 minutes ago, Swami, when yeah. you mentioned um, a couple of weeks ago about forgetting to breathe. Yep. I was concentrating on my, with my hand on my chest to, to the vibrations yeah. and the different oscillations of the vibrations and was forgetting to take a breath. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that funny? You said that very a couple good. Weeks ago. See how easy it happens, though? It, it's very easy, yeah. It's a total natural thing. And it's it's not more... something you have a thought, okay, I'm going to do this thing because I perceive it to be cool or anything like that. Nothing <laughs> like that occurs. Yeah, when... Because if things like that are occurring in your mind, it won't happen. Sure. Sure, yeah. And those who do get, okay, because I will tell you guys, as you, as you progress, abilities do manifest. Psychic abilities, all sorts of things, okay? But what this is, that, that happening is just a higher level way of tripping people up from actually getting to the goal. This is built into the system itself. Because the individual, if they do not have, and sometimes even if they do have a true, authorized, empowered master, they will begin to take these abilities and things personally. I can do this. And if I can do this, I can then influence people. Or I can make money doing it. I can go out and charge people to heal them. Or, you know, none of this is for business. Hmm. Every human doing this sort of thing to make a dollar is paying a huge karmic price eventually. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be done because it's natural and it's time for it to occur. 
when I was doing when I was doing the um, the mantra, I started off kind of doing a kind of singy thing, uh -huh. just to get into it, I suppose. You know how they're Om Namah Shivaya, mm. Mm. <laughs> doing right. it in a singy sort of way, uh, and then as it went went on, I was able to kind of bring the the, the timber of my voice down, down yeah. and um, make it more. Um, from the heart and uh, well it makes the vibration more pr pronounced in your hand on your chest yeah it? yeah and I enjoyed working with that bit mm. but wait you said nothing happened no <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't get a kind of fuzzy feeling in my head or my she didn't, she didn't fall off somewhere so. <laughs> <laughs> I was very grounded <laughs> See, we, we are we are mere, mere infants in the study Swami we, we've got a long way to go <laughs> See, my, my normal um, meditation practice is Zazen, and um, I practice with my eyes open, and it's a, a bang to reality kind of thing with the eyes open, because obviously when you close the eyes, it's more of an internal process, um, and I sort of deal more in the meditation of just accepting the point you're in, the point you're at, this moment, you're in this room. Yeah, but see, that is giving... That is giving authority to these things surrounding you, and not moving beyond them. I thought it was, I, I, I don't, don't acknowledge it. any of them. Uh, okay, I'm just saying for what I do, Yeah. I don't give a crap about what's around you. I want you to go to that place inside, still and quiet. That's it. Not where nothing touches ever. Mm. And if you only get a second, a glimpse of that, you'll realize it's real. Mm. That it can all be settled down to that. Yeah. And yeah. then you can go out and engage in anything you want. Yeah. But I'll until fight. that until that stillness is directly and consciously experienced, it's an idea. It's a belief. It's not a knowledge. Mm. Mm. I Just to know it, you have to directly and consciously experience it. Otherwise, it's just a belief, and that can change. Mm. The knowledge can't change. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, through through my practice, I feel like I've kind of connected holistically with. Many things through the movement and the meditation. Oh, yeah, congratulations, you're the king of a dream. <laughs> <laughs> king of a dream. <laughs> yeah, I, I find that I find I can't. I find that I find I have to close my eyes and to sort of see some connection to feel. When you were saying about things happening behind your eyes, mm -hmm. I felt I often get um, when I've done sort of other meditations like this is, is that I get a swirling sort of yep. licking my eyes, I think, when they're closed. Right. And, um, a I mean, smoky kind of... A sm exactly, a smoky yep. that, that's sort of blowing in the wind a little bit. And yep. it's, it's just looking deep inward sort of thing. And um, yep. and also feeling feeling the vibe. I mean, I used to do that when I was a kid. I used to feel my, like, put my hand on my throat and sort of, like, go, uh, you know, and feel the, the uh -huh. vibrations uh -huh. from that. So I think it's very, it's kind of similar to those, you know... See, I I, I feel that like going too inward like that is losing touch with... But you're not going too far inward. You're feeling the... When you're doing the mantra, you feel like that the mantra's dictating the way you the way it comes about. The mantra feels. carries the awareness. Exactly, yeah. Well, it, carries, it carries the feelings and it carries the um, these feelings of motion that you have inside you. I mean, it's, it's just like less feeling your heart beating really, isn't it? And being listening to your internal sort of uh, stuff but, that's going but on. Like, if, if you if you go on like a, a kid's ride, like a roundabout or something, and you close your eyes and spin round, you're going to get a feeling. But that's that it's just a feeling. It's a sensation yeah, in the body. But that, that's a more physical thing, isn't it? It's more of when you're tuning into what you're but doing. But when you're getting the vibrations going within your body, that's creating a feeling and a sensation within the body as well. And the, the mind interprets these things in certain ways. Sure, sure. And so it, it, 
you know, it's often the, the mind can go on a, a, a trip of its own. Mm. And, uh, right, because you got to realize both the mind and the body are the problem. The, the mind is that definitely... Is both those <laughs> yeah, the mind. Yeah, the mind is definitely yeah, the yeah. You, you have and to drop just the mind. Fit. Yeah. Yeah. Just fit as that, without mind, without body. And then you go, oh, crap, I've been this all along. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just but, got... But I, I don't think, I don't feel that when I'm doing meditation where the mind is just dropping with the eyes open, with the just focusing... Um, and on the breath, keeping the breath so that any thoughts that come into the mind are immediately that you recognize you're having thoughts, you go back to the breath and concentrate on the breath, right. and then right. just get to the point where the, the, the mind is dropping, 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 peeling off the layers so that you're not getting the thoughts coming up. This, through that process of just being, just to be in the moment that you're in, that moment which is eternal, which is not then or before, just the moment that you're in. That's the process that I'm looking for within my meditation, mm. just to be in that moment. And um, uh, it's, yeah, well, it takes time to kind of get to those points within meditation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Find that yeah. Point. Well, Swami said as much, though, didn't he? Saying, realize your moment, what you're doing now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, you have yeah. to be in the moment. Otherwise, you're, you know, your mind's always ahead. You're, you're mm. singing a song in your head, or you're thinking about what you're planning for the next thing, or you're, you're thinking about something that you're going to do. Just be in the moment that is now, with no thought. Just in the, not thinking about what you just did earlier. Just in the moment that you are. But see, now. without without some sort of meditative practice, people won't get that mm. because well, it'll that, be that, nothing. That, that, that's what I'm saying. That, 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 by the mind from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's what my meditation practice is. It's right. To to sit and bring the body to that point where the mind is um, not thinking of anything. It you, you just are. You're just in that moment there, mm. and all there is is breath coming in, coming out, and so you're you're. The universe is coming in and going out. You're, you're just connecting to the ebb and flow of the universe, and that and that's the universe that's within you and the universe that's without. The, the yin and the yang, the point of transition, which is the body. The body being the, the the point at which the universe can come in and meet the universe within, and the universe within can go and meet the universe without. And, it's these these points of uh, slowing the vibration so that those walls become uh, almost transcendent and very still and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes. very beautiful to find those points of, uh, of stillness yeah. within us. Yes, well, and, see, and now you guys are speaking of the value of slowing down while there are 11 jillion websites telling you how to increase your vibrations. Yeah. If you increase your vibrations without a foundation of stillness, you will become unstable. Period. Yeah. It's like building a taller and taller building on sand. <laughs> Built built it on the swamp. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. If you do not seek the stillness from which all activity emerges, you're still just in the activity and the effect. Yeah. And you won't become aware of anything other than that. Yeah. And then, if you go too fast, too far, you'll have problems. And then situations and events of a problematic nature will occur, which will bring about thoughts of a problematic nature, which can then turn into mental health issues, 
I mean, it doesn't, it just, it's all connected. Mm. Yeah. That's right. If you're That's going good. to the stillness, it's completely safe. Nothing bad can happen. If you're trying to go too far, too fast, you're going to fall and scrape your knee. Mm. That's right, because if you're driving a Porsche at uh, 100 miles an hour, you can't just suddenly put it into first gear you know, and suddenly drive very slowly. <laughs> You've got to right. go yeah, down the gears yeah. Yeah, exactly. before you can... That's why I perceive all this new age, speed up your vibration stuff as crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because people are not yet still, all this speeding up is going to cause problems. Well, the thing is that maybe our vibrations are might be like naturally speeding up, but we have no, we may not be able to have any. Um, uh, we, we can't influence, not influence them. It's just happening naturally, and we have to accommodate to that by doing practices to consciously bring ourselves to, you know, slow things down. Yes. Otherwise, the world just goes like that, doesn't it? it? Life just goes so quickly. A day goes by like that. And, and right. it, it, it's so quick, and it's so easy to get very frustrated within situations. And instead of just going, well, well I'm just going to slow down. And go, right, well, let's have a look at this, and take this like this, and that like that. And not, right. not take it as a big, like, oh, my God, oh, this has happened. Right, then it doesn't feel like there's a wave coming at you. Yeah. It's like, okay, I take this and deal with that, and then this, you know, I mean, it's it, it turns into, you know, like you've been assigned to eat an elephant. If you yeah. just sit there looking at this big freaking elephant and the thought of, I have to eat this, you never do it. If you shut up, sit down, take one bite after another, eventually you're done. Mm -hmm. Regardless what the task is. If you okay. slow it down, take it piece by piece and yeah. bite by bite, it cannot overwhelm you. Yeah. And when you are overwhelmed, you are in fear, which freezes you. That's absolutely, yeah. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah. And when you are frozen, you can't accomplish even the simplest thing for your own good. Yeah. Yeah. I and you guys, specifically you, Fychik, as we're talking about the Zen stuff, you have been able to observe the way your mind functions while you are sitting there observing it. You can gain insight into the way things are triggered within your own mind. Yeah, I know, and different times when I meditate, I know, I, not I know, but I notice, you know, like sometimes I'll be doing sitting and uh, I won't be able to get a song out of my head. Or another time I'll sit and I'll just think, oh, that was amazing. That was just really beautiful. I was able to really feel um, at peace. <laughs> right. And, and you just don't know what's going to kind of come up. You might have had a really shitty day, but then you go and sit, and it's all right. I do know when I go on retreat, though, that it, it takes a while to deepen practice. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And that's why I really appreciate doing retreats, just to have that opportunity in a place where there's no Wi-Fi, <laughs> no internet connection, no shops, <laughs> hardly any people live around. Well, no. there's about 100 people in the village. Aren't there? Beautiful dojo. Yeah. Very amazing place, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just, to, just to be able to deepen the practice there and come back and feel inspired or, I mean, sometimes I come back and I don't feel inspired because it highlights, when I come back, I've you know, something has been highlighted and brought up, and I have to deal with that. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. So it just depends, kind of what. It's it's the process. 
Yeah, exactly. But if you weren't engaged in it, you wouldn't be able to sort these things out. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They would just keep smacking you in the head yeah. day after day after day yeah. after day. Yeah, and you, you don't know what it is. It's like an invisible person punching you. <laughs> but then right. once you know what it is, you kind of like, oh, right, it was that thing that keeps punching me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. At least you know then. I mean, that's back. why, I mean, I, I mean, absolutely, I, I mean no disrespect of your practice, okay? Mm -hmm. I know exactly what's going on, I know what that does, I know where it goes, all that stuff, and I, I bless you 100% in that practice. Because all the practices that take us within will take us to the truth. There are varying levels to be moved through. That's all. That's they right. all go to the same thing eventually. And a lot of it's down to the individual as well. It, you know, it could be any practice. And it, but it's down to how you are interpreting and working with your life. To what you get from well, the it, it really depends on whether you're externally focused or internally focused. Because those doing externally focused things won't get it. They'll see effects. They'll dance with the play. They won't be able to sit back and realize there's a play going on. They're just too busy in it. You know? They don't get to that stillness unless you go inside and that and that is done through contemplation and meditation sometimes people will have spontaneous experiences of internal energies that wake them up but these are really pretty rare and those ones are ones who have been doing the normal internal uh, practices for lifetimes. It was just their time to wake up. But people read about a couple of folks like that and then think, oh, well, I don't have to do shit. Wrong. <laughs> if, if you ain't thinking like that one does, hey, wait, and that one I'm pointing at isn't even thinking anymore. They just are. Because the mind stops. No thoughts occurring. None, because they're not necessary. The mind is your servant. We just get we just get that relationship backwards. The mind exists to assist you in functioning through the body. It does what it does. Great. But it doesn't have to be doing it all the damn time. It only needs to do it when you need it to. That's it. The rest of the time, you can be silent, smooth as glass, and happy. Content, even. I started reading about how contentment was a really important thing. And in my own mind, at that point, I was like, wait a minute. If you're, because for me at that point, even the word content meant less than. It had, it had a meaning of, oh, well, you're only content, you're content, you're settling. You know that, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. there's, yeah. so it infers some sort of loss, but it's not. It's just being okay. No issues happening. I'm not worked up. I'm neither happy nor not happy. I just am. Period. And that's a strange place to sit. Yeah. Well, because content can mean you're contained. You're actually in a in a in a comfortable place. Containment, content. Right. But then this contentment comes out. People who have bliss, it comes out. Um, people who are 
who are bhaktas, um, who have the the joyful tears, just all of a sudden, joyful tears. You can't stop it. You can't make it happen. It just happens. And and when that occurs for people who feel that, <laughs> that, <laughs> is actually, that is actually the highest state that the in, that the bound individual can feel while still bound is that. That is the closest to divine bliss they can get while still being ignorant of how things work. So those people who go through that or who have that are blessed. They get to feel something very, very close to God itself. Mm. Through that. And how many of us can appreciate it? I used to get my butt kicked because of it. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So this stuff is deep. It's universal. Humans on this planet and many others are going through it. It's the way it works. Yeah, you must be always really fit this way. Yeah. I mean the the tears of joy thing is is, is possibly a, a pressure release. It's a letting go. Well, it's all release, isn't it? Mm. Tears, laughter. Tears, laughter, but yeah, yeah. A fart, even. A fart, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the tears, the tears thing's an interesting one. Definitely. Well, I mean, that's the inner reality of what is occurring in that moment for people. Mm. They're not aware of it at all. Unless, you know, they've heard someone like myself give them the definition of what's occurring. Mm. Because otherwise, you don't know. If, uh, when uh, I was a kid, I could hear gospel music, and it would happen. Any number of things could trigger it. But, mm. but it, it was, and then later on, I, I started calling it my truth barometer. Yeah. Yeah. Because whenever that got triggered, something about whatever triggered that was the truth. It's resonation. Yeah. 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 yeah there are different songs that have kind of brought me to tears. Yes. Over the years, I remember mm. the first time I saw you know the um. Who's that? That's um. Yeah, massive attack. Massive attack. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a very emotive Teard song. Teardrop. It's called Teardrop, yeah. Well, uh, oh. someone, someone said that um, she's had an abortion or something. Oh, no, it said um, that the video was about an abortion. Really? Yeah. And I watched the video, and it was just so sad. Oh, God. <laughs> and it made me cry. I mean, it's not, you know, a woman going, it's, it's a baby within the womb, and mm. it focuses on this baby within the womb, and you don't, yeah, you know, sort of see something like that. But it was. Do you remember that? It's just a film of, of a fetus growing inside him. It's not an abortion. Well. Well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what um, I'd heard mm. about it. Well, and, that, that's um, when you make an emotive. That's well, going it's going to yeah, yeah. suggest to you something. Yeah. But you've got to let go of. <laughs> Listen to the Swami. <laughs> He's giving us away. <laughs> well, I just thought that that was quite. And it's not the only way. And it's not the only way, you know, but it's a damn no, good no, one. No, no, <laughs> you, if you follow the ways that carry you to that, wonderful. Because I know where they're going to take you. Mm. If you want to come along and ride with me, groovy, jump in. we got plenty of room. <laughs> no problem. But if this don't work for you, great. Do what does. But do something. Mm. Seek it, and you must find it. When the student is ready, the master appears. It has always been this way. Like in Mr. Ben. 
And it will always be that way. On this dimension, on this planet, and every other. It's just part of the process. It's a very simple process once you're not so heavily influenced by the process. <laughs> when you can take up the witnessing, the pure witnessing, where you can look at anything and none of it raises any anything you can observe. It's completely free to see anything you don't have to be afraid of anything you don't have to seek anything you're just observing it all occur everything is playing out you can choose to become wigged out about it if you want I couldn't tell you how many people I work with where in my head I see them just sitting there hitting themselves in the face with a hammer over and over and over again and bitching about how much it hurts. <laughs> yep. yep. And I say, put the hammer down. Step away from the hammer. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't realize they were even doing that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's of great value every time we have satsang. Satsang is when someone who is not yet awake <laughs> has the opportunity to interact with someone who is. It is called communing with truth. And that individual, let's use this Swami form, this vehicle, for an example. It's not about me. Not even a little bit. I ain't doing none of this stuff. I'm watching it all happen, though. I'm riding the wave. But I'm not, it's a very strange thing when the doership goes away. It's a huge release. And then, you, when you're, you know, in this path, we go into transcendental states, which don't, which, which are beyond mind and body. That's why they're called transcendental. They transcend and move beyond the mind and the body limitations. But, even for someone well-versed in transcendence, imminence, being in the body is a problem. <laughs> the objective is to be 100% both at the same time. Then there's nothing left to ruffle you. Yep. The more you merge the individuation into the infinite, the more the infinite emerges through the individuation. It's a completely natural process. And it's easy. If it weren't easy, I couldn't have done it, I guarantee you. I was an asshole and a dork most of my life. And now, I'm a little better than that. Not a lot, but <laughs> it changes you, changes the way you think, changes the way you see things. All of it changes. But if you're doing 
nothing to reach this inner dormant awareness that is just as much a part of you as anything you see, hear, taste, or smell, you can't have it. That is why those in the secret societies, the Archonic folk, do what they do. And they're not fully awake, or they wouldn't be acting like that. They got to a point where they got some control and some phenomena, and they went nuts. Just like, I don't know how many different animal species do this, but I know for sure elephants. If you have a herd of elephants with a number of juvenile males and no old buck, no old bull, the juvenile males will run amok and cause trouble and do damage and all. But if you have an old bull, the old bull quite naturally will be able to affect their behavior. And they won't act like that. Not to the degree they will if there is no presence of the bull. And that's just nature. We are just like that. When one comes into the presence of one who knows, all this nonsense can slow down and stop. Otherwise, you're just in the nonsense, spinning. Morning till night, mind pushing you, thoughts, nonsense, but you take it seriously. It's all just crap. It can be stopped. And you don't lose anything by doing it. You gain everything. Mm -hmm. Finally, some real understanding comes that is bulletproof. And it's time for humanity to wake up. I, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I don't buy into this whole massive ascension crap of the New Agers. If you haven't done your work, you ain't getting it, period. Yes, vibrations will increase. Yes, things will occur in that direction, and they will have effects, but you will not be awake. You'll still be in those effects. And just because it gets a little better, doesn't make it the truth. Those who have done the inner work are the ones who will be ready for this. They won't have to think about it. Won't have to have even read the word ascension. <laughs> but there's tons of people out there reading the word ascension and thinking, ooh, ooh, love and light, oh, love and light. And they're just so full of crap while they're cussing people out on the highway, while they're bitching with their kids while they're talking bad about people behind their back. That's not awakened. That's lying. That's misdirected. Ignorant. They're still dark inside. They close their eyes. They see nothing but darkness. It's, it's insecurity, isn't it? And feeling like that you know, there's uh, an emptiness there that they are afraid of. Yes, yes. But but not understanding that that, that, that emptiness is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, don't be afraid really. of it. Yeah. Go, go into the boredom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Embrace the boredom. Embrace the emptiness. <laughs> right. The only way to get everything 
is to seek nothing. nothing. To seek nothing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. You're never disappointed that way, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you you've got it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, okay, let me tell you something about, oh, we're running out of time here, aren't we? We, we yeah, we're, are, getting, yeah. we're pretty close to bedtime. <laughs> okay. Um, but round, round no. it off anyway. We'll 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 close out today. Thank you so much for sat saying today, you two. It's great to talk to you, Tommy. Yeah, it's always great Appreciate to talk to you, it. Tommy. Um everyone listening, thank you very much. Night everyone. I'm, I will be very happy to take your emails and believe me, when you make contact with me, if you will enter into a friendship with me. I will put all this inside you. It's not hard to do. It's hard to get you to notice it sometimes. And to sit with it. That's kind of hard. But even that is conquered through the practice. You're not being withheld Jim. from keeping. Jim just sent a message to us all saying goodnight. <laughs> all right. If y'all um, just um, hit the off switch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, all Come just on, Stay. Bless you. Oh, realities. <laughs>